I just think right now women, especially in business, this is the year of women. I just know that. Life begins at 150 grand a year, life gets better at 250, and life gets real good at 500. Nobody can tell me differently on it. When you start teaching something, I feel like that's when you start to master the actual art of it. You and I, when we publish a book, we can go toe to toe with any of the New York trade publishers, any of the big time authors. And we get to compete in that marketplace and then let the market decide whether our stuff is good. People forget sometimes as an entrepreneur, the whole damn point of entrepreneurship is to make money. And now here is The Win with your hostess, serial entrepreneur, marketeer, and chief sexy boss, Heather Havenwood. Our whole world revolves around our smartphones now. You know they say we look at our phones on an average of 150 times a day or more. Look, if you're a small business and want to grow, you need to reach people where they're looking the most. They're smartphones. So text the word START to 72000 now to learn more from our friends at Mobit or go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash Mobit. Again, text the word START to 72000 now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Win with Heather Havenwood. I am super, super freaking excited to have Mitch Steven on the line. Mitch, you there? I am here. You are there, of course. And you're in Texas. I'm in Texas. We're going to have a ton of fun today. So everyone, this is Heather Havenwood with The Win. And in purpose of this whole podcast and this show and this radio show, listened to across 25 stations across the country, is to help you start a business. And if you already have a business, to grow it. So I'm very excited to have someone that I've known for a couple of years. He lives in San Antonio. He does a ton of different things in businesses as well as a ton of real estate, which I'm very excited to have that. We're going to go into that more. So listen up. Just stay tuned. His name is Rich Steven. He has been a self-employed real estate investor for 20 plus years. His real estate investing career started at the sweet, young, little age of 23. Uh, and he read The Nothing Down by Robert Allen, which by the way, I've read as well. It's really awesome. So Mitch, together with his wife, Tommy, and his daughters, and Shannon, purchased their fair share of local houses in the San Antonio area. Their company, Independence Day Incorporated, has bought and sold over 1,300 properties in about the San Antonio area since 1996. And this, of course, this company specializes in buying distressed properties with OPM, that's called Other People's Money People, and selling those properties with owner financing. So we're going to get into it. Let's talk about it, Mitch. You obviously are also a storage facility owner, but let's start with your book. You've got a few out there. Which one do you want to start with? Well, first of all, they're all under the My Life in a Thousand Houses series. And I wrote the first one, which was kind of autobiographical, which just kind of explained how I had to keep morphing in this business. And it was also kind of the tale of what happens after the Get Rich seminar. After you go to that seminar and they tell you how you're going to make all this money and show you big checks, this is what really happens right after that. When you go out there and you try to get some of those big checks. What? Are you saying that's not all 100% real? What? Well, it can be done and it's all true. It's just they make it sound so easy, you know? Yeah, you just find a house and then you flip it. Look, there's 20 grand and there's all these little (laughs) things that happen along the way and what I call challenges that pop up. You know, remember that? I don't know if you remember this. Maybe I'm old, but Chunky Cheese, and they still have it. And it's a game where you it pops, 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 and you have to hit, hit, hit. You're trying to like discover where the, the thing pops up. That's why I feel about real estate investing. It's like, you just want to sell the house, or you just want to buy the house, or whatever. It's like, all these things come up. You're like, pop, 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 right? Like, I was going to be rude and say, I don't remember that. I guess I'm, I was younger. But I do remember, so. Anyway, mm-hmm. point is, so let's, okay, so you have a ton of different books out, and I'm just going to read them out loud so people can go check them out. My Life in a Thousand Houses. And it is a series. So the next book is Failing Forward to Financial Freedom. Another one is 200 Plus Ways to Find Bargain Properties. Another one is The Art of Owner Financing. That's awesome. So you can find those at the following website, 1000houses.com. 1000houses.com. So, I mean, you know, I've known each other for a while. We're now in 2017, early first quarter of 2017 sitting here. You've, I mean, you've ridden the wave, you know, so what has been the wave here in Texas and and what's been happening the last couple of years in real estate? Well, we had the recession was the big thing. That was terrific. My, My business model thrives in the recession because my business model, owner financing, which is the reason why I wrote My Life in a Thousand Houses, The Art of Owner Financing, is because I think it may be recession proof. So far, it's survived three recessions. 
And the reason is, is I buy these houses with OPM, other people's money, and then when I sell them, I finance them to the buyer. I just take a down payment and they make payments to me. So nowhere in this equation did you hear the word bank. And so when the bank shut down, everyone else goes out of business and Mitch Steven and, and his little Independence Day Inc. cashforhouses.net keeps a chug of lugging down the road and it actually picks up steam because I'm the only guy open. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I got caught in it. I mean, I got caught in it. I got caught in the 06, 07 downturn, wipe out, readjust. I don't know what you want to call yeah. that thing. Um, Think about it. Yeah. Think about it. What happens in the recession? The banks clam up, right? When the banks stop loaning money, what happens to the price of houses? They fall. And the core belief of the owner finance strategy is that a, a person paying $1,000 a month to rent would rather pay $1,000 a month to own. So if the prices of the houses are falling because no one can afford to, no one can get a loan to buy a house, then what happens to rents? If no one can buy, they're either buying or they're renting. I mean, they're not going out under a bridge or living in tents. Most of them, you know, 99.9999% are. The rents are going up. So if your business model is based on the rents and the rents are going up, during the recession, my owner finance houses are appreciating right along with the rents because I'm just backing into the rents to get my sales price. And so it's a perfect storm. In the recession, I'm buying at the low of the low, and then I'm selling at the high of the high, and everyone's my customer because the banks have shut down, and they all still have to have places to live. So I'm getting to talk to a lot more people. In 2009, during the, the height of the recession, I was buying a house a day. Wow, that's pretty impressive. And that, for ever people to understand, maybe you're thinking, well, how is he doing that? Is it with cash? Is it own cash? Can you explain to people like what OPM means? What does that mean? If the banks are closed, this is 2009, just to give you a fallback, you know, what did that look like? That looked like Goldman Sachs going under. There was a lot of things. Countrywide, countrywide was the whistle, the, the, the first bell to go off. And then the rest of them started falling. You couldn't get a loan at all. Even today, as we're speaking, when I talk to people about getting a loan, they say things like, well, they want 20% down. When you're thinking 20% down of it, just a $200,000 house, that's a big chunk of change, 40K, right? And when you're looking at the average house, and I'm talking in Austin right now, 350 to 400,000, 20% of that, that really puts a lot of people out of the market, right? So, I mean, explain to people what OPM means exactly and how that happened in 2009. The recession started in 2008. I didn't wake up till about six or seven months later and was looking at the prices of houses and said, holy crap, the down market is here right in my town. It's time to buy, buy, buy. And so I you know, got off the golf cart and quit messing around and rolled up my sleeves, went to the office and started calling my private money people, OPM, other people's money. I borrow private people's money. I pay them 8%, 6 to 8% interest, depending on uh, how much I borrow, what percentage of the LTV loan to value. And they give me their money for interest only, five years, non-recourse, which means it's a collateral only loan. But I only borrow, if I'm going to buy a $100,000 house, I average about 55000 So I'm just a little over 50% is what I'm borrowing, just only. And so they're in a great protected position. And, you know, if, if I don't pay them what I say I'm going to pay them, then they have a first lien on my house and they get my house. And the house is worth a lot more than what I owe them. Now, that being said, Heather, if you're planning on getting my house, don't plan on that. Don't hold your breath because in 1,500 houses, that bio is a little old. In 1,500 houses in my career, I've never given a house back to anyone, never filed bankruptcy, never been foreclosed on, never anything. So I, there's too much margin, and I'm too good at what I do to have to worry about giving back houses. So I borrow the money from private people, and then I demand a down payment in 20, 25, 30 years worth of payments from the people who buy the house from me. Again, no bank. Interesting. Now, have you ever had to be the one that forecloses on the property of the buyer? Have you ever had to do Oh, yeah. 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 You have to. I mean, I don't like it no, and I don't want to and it's not my goal. But if they stop paying me, I have to get my house back and sell it to someone who I think can pay. So here's a better question, right? So I, I told you this story privately and I'll kind of share a little bit about it. But uh, my fiance, Don, has some properties in, in uh, San Antonio in your, in your backyard, as they call it. And he's got one, what I call a bad property, you know, that bad in the egg, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, no matter what, how many times the tenancy gets in there, someone just destroys his property. Like every time we turn around and I said to him, you know, we need to stop renting it, sell it or do what Mitch does, owner financing, because what happens is if the toilet does this or the AC does that, you know, it's always breaking. He's having to go down there and fix it. 
So people listening, if that happens, let's just say you own a property and you're renting it or that you're over financing it. Do you have to, you know, go down there and fix the plumbing or fix the AC unit? Once upon a time, I was going to get free because I bought what all the gurus were saying, the buy and hold theory, which is a bunch of BS. You know, BS. all this crap that you're going to buy these houses and you're going to owe 500 and you're going to collect 900. So you're going to keep 400 in the middle cash flow. They just gave zero ounce of weight to every liability on your side of the page, which is everything you can think of. So let's just start off. Air conditioner, hot water heater, sink, electrical, fuses, fuse box, roof, garage door, sprinkler, carpet, drawers, sinks, okay, toilets, stop. shower heads. Okay, you could go on and on and on forever. I'm just getting warmed up, baby. I'm just getting warmed up, you know? And so they just glossed over that, really. You're just going to clear from the 900, and they just flat out also, lied to you is what they did. They also say they're going to pay on time. They're always going to pay. They're never going to hurt, you know, break a window. Like, they're just going to be these perfect little tenants for the rest of their lives. And you and I both know that's not true. They glossed okay, so, over that in the seminar room. So I, I bought into it. I went out and had 25 houses. I was supposed to make $300 a house. That's 7500 bucks a month I was supposed to make. Now, even I was smart enough to know that can't go that good. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Are you over 45, 60? Are you relying on the traditional medical field to help you feel great and get you back to a balanced body? Good luck with that. At E2Lab.com, Dr. Don Salio got sick of people complaining about bloating, inflammation, and feeling sluggish. He has created unique, potent, and powerful non-pharmaceutical supplements to help the body rebalance, detox, and get back to being healthy. Go to E2Lab.com, getting you back to healthy and balanced. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Because I only needed 3500 to live, but I kept going until I had 7500 coming in because I thought at least I'll keep about half of it, you know, and I'll be right. free. Well, no. At the end of the year, I didn't have anything left. I, as a matter of fact, I think I lost 1000 bucks. So I'm this serious don't want her guy. I mean, the money would come in or sometimes it wouldn't. And it just wasn't hitting my bottom line. So if you're a landlord and you collect the payments, you don't know if it's your money or not. You could even collect the payments for like two, three, four months, but you still can't spend it because you're not sure if it's your money. You see, because if the air conditioner breaks and it costs $2,400, then apparently all that money that you're collecting belongs to the air conditioner man. But when you're the bank and you're just receiving a payment and it's their house, so let's go through the other side. I had these 70, these 25 houses. I was supposed to collect $7,500 a month. It wasn't working. Not a penny of it was hitting my bottom line. I got real scared. I hired a guy for ten grand. My last ten grand, as if ten grand wasn't enough in nineteen ninety whatever. I was my last ten grand, which always makes it like tenfold more right. important. It's not ten grand. It's like this is all I got, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is it. I'm down to like nothing. He says, "Trust me." I'm thinking, well, "Where have I heard this word before?" <laughs> in short order, he straightens me out. He teaches me. He says, "Quit being the landlord. Go by and find out who in your house wants to give you a down payment. Get a down payment from them." Work out payments for them over 20, 25, 30 year period, 15 year period, whatever you can work out with them and try to make the payment, including the taxes, and the insurance, pretty much what they're paying right now, plus or minus 50 or 100 bucks and see, see what you can work out. Well, I didn't even believe in the system. I think and this isn't going to work. And I tried to sell those houses, but in the neighborhoods that they were in, no one there could get a new loan. And this was during the easy time to get a new loan. So I go out not even really believing in my heart that this is going to work. In six months, I collect $3,000 from every house average, and I've got everyone paying about exactly the same or a little bit more because people will pay more to own a house than to rent. So do the math. I had 3,000 times 25 houses. How much is that? Uh, 60, something, 70,000. Oh, 75,000 bucks. So I had 75,000 bucks in my bank account. That wasn't a refundable deposit like the rent, right? What can you do with a $1,000 rent deposit? Nothing. Nothing. But I collected $3,000 average on, on all the houses. I had 75000 in the bank. And that $7,500 now that I thought I was going to get half of when I was a landlord, I'm now getting all of it as the bank. I went from this doom and gloom situation where I wasn't getting any and I was going broke and I'm drowning to having $75,000 in the bank. I'm getting $7,500 a month hitting my account, hitting my bottom line with no liabilities because I'm the bank. Have you ever owned your own house? Of course, of course. Yeah, but when, when the toilet broke or the hot water heater broke, did you call the mortgage company and say, hey, you need to send somebody over here? No, I had to fix it myself out of pocket. Yep. Right. And if you would have called the mortgage company and said, hey, man, my hot water heater's on the blink, what do you think they'd have told you? 
that are told you, hey, hit the road, send in your payment, I don't want to hear from you anymore. So now instead of just trying to get the $3,500 I was hoping for, I was collecting the whole $7,500. And then the note buyer called me. And then the note, let me ask, okay, so let me ask you before you get into that, because it's a whole other world, note buyers, right? So real quick, some people might be asking, what about property taxes, right? So let me just go through the scenario. I want you to answer it. Who's responsible for the property taxes if you are renting the property? Who's responsible for the property taxes if you are owner financing? Mitch? Well, if you're if you're renting the property, I'm going to assume that you're the owner, so you are got to pay the taxes and the insurance, by the way. And if they go up, you got to suffer that loss, and probably your tenant's rent won't go up with the taxes next year because you probably didn't plan for that. And when the insurance company says your insurance is going to be a little more this year just because of cost of inflation, um, you probably forgot to build that into your contract, so your renter's payment to you doesn't go up. It keeps coming out of you. When you're the owner financier, I sold the house to them for X amount down and X amount per month for X amount of years. It's not my house. It's not my house. It's my 30 years worth of payments. Not responsible for the increase of property taxes or insurance. That's a key piece. I mean, I you know, I guess I live here in Austin and other big cities. Our property taxes have skyrocketed in the last couple of years. I mean, just skyrocketed. But the person that owns the property is responsible, including owner finance. In the owner finance payment, I collect principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, and the escrow servicing fee of $35 a month. And when every year, when we pay the taxes, we usually get a reassessment, and we go back and we find out what the new taxes are, and we reassess the whole payment based on principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, and escrow servicing fee. Now, the principal, and the interest, and the escrow servicing fee usually don't change. The only two things that can probably change is the insurance or the taxes. And if they go up, then we divide that increase by 12 and we add it to their payment. And if it goes down, we subtract that difference by 12 and take it off their payment. Sometimes people can go fight their taxes and the taxes could go down, you know, yeah, not often. This is a really interesting, it's a, it's, a, it's a different business model. So I want to kind of move into what I call virtual business model because you and I talked about this also. You really figured out a business model for real estate. And I, I want people to really hear that because there's Realtor, if you're listening, you're like, there's a realtor and they don't own really anything. They're just salesmen, right? And then the investor, the quote unquote, what's out there a lot is the buy and hold or the flippers. And the yards are the flippers. And then this model, I think this is a long term strategy. It's a better strategy, but we were wrong. I said that long term strategy. I'm just kind of guessing that. But who's this kind of strategy for? Is this a person that has to be full time? Who's this? Who is this strategy for, Mitch? Well, think about it. If I if I have 250 notes and, and I'm not a landlord and all I have to do is collect their payments, I can be anywhere in the world and they either make their payments or they don't make their payments. If they don't make their payments, I call my lawyer. Everyone goes, well, isn't it a pain to foreclose on people? I said, yeah, let me show you how hard it is. You take this thing right here called a phone and you dial this number right here and that guy's name is Frank and you say, Frank, foreclose on this house, 123 Main Street and call me when you have the keys. Now, where's my margarita? <laughs> <laughs> Where's my margarita? I love yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it's really an interesting business model. Vir- there's a lot of conversation about virtual real estate investing business model. I don't know if you can talk about that at all, but also about the note buying. So which way do you want to go with that? You want to? Well, let's back up. So so I think you're interested in the systems that allow you to have the freedom, whether you're doing it virtual or you're doing it your home time. Yeah. The systems to have a real business versus a one-off. Because just real quickly, I feel that what's talked about out there, and you know me, I've been in a thousands and thousands of hours of these. They teach one-offs. They don't teach business building. One-offs is a job. That means you got to do it every time. You do one, you got to do it again. Do one, you do it again. So let's look at the owner finance model. Typical uh, deal. I buy a house for, uh, well, first of all, I, I go in and I figure out what the rents are. And then I got this formula. And you figure out from the rents what you can afford to sell the house for if you're offering owner financing has nothing to do with the MIA appraiser, has nothing to do with tax value, has nothing to do with the BPO, broker's professional opinion, nothing to do with the CMA, nothing to do with any of that, has nothing to do with what happened in the past, has exactly what to do with what are the rents right now, right now. And rents are a lot easier to get a handle on than, than sales. And you can do it in the front of in front of a house in like 10 minutes on your phone. And so let's say I could buy this house for um, $50,000. And so I always borrow 2000 more at least than what it takes me to get in a house, closing costs, everything included. I need two thousand extra dollars for my left hand pocket, and that's because finding houses is not free. It costs money to find houses. So I borrow fifty two, and my payments three hundred and forty dollars a month, and then I sell it for one hundred and ten with ten thousand dollars down, and I carry the hundred thousand dollar balance that's owed to me 
at 10% for 30 years, and their payment is like 840 bucks, let's just say. And so do you see what just happened there? I made 2000 when I bought the house, 10000 when I owned or financed it, and I cleared a profit of $500 a month. I got paid $12,000 to create $500 a month coming in, of which I have no liabilities. $500 a month, $6,000 a year, right? Now, if I do that twice a month, I make $24,000. I have $1,000 a month coming in every month now. What's 500 times 360 months? $500 times 30 years worth of payments equals $180,000. Plus, I picked up $12,000 in the down payment, so that's $192,000. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Are you a business owner that has a website but not tech savvy? Do you feel like a hostage to your web guy? The better question is, do you have a money funnel so people come to your page and give you money while you sleep? No? Then go watch free video at heathermakesyoumoney.com. Imagine having a money site, not a website, for your self-published book, e-commerce products, local practitioners like chiropractors or lawyers. Get a money site, not a website. Go watch free video at heathermakesyoumoney.com. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. With how much money out of my pocket did I just make almost $200,000 in my future? I borrowed the whole 52. I have zero. Not only did I borrow the 50 to buy the house, I borrowed 2000 extra. I got paid $2,000 plus picked up $10,000 in the down payment. You can't figure out the rate of return on this because I have no money in it. How many can you do when you have no money in it? You've really figured out not only is this the one, this is a system that people can do over and over and over again. And you've done, how many have you done of oh, this is 2017, one month? So last year alone, what do you think? How many? Did I did 77 month? last month. 77 last month, which is December of 2015. Now let's just figure this out. Hold on a second. 77. And that's, by the way, is a very typical deal. So 77 times $500 per month, that's $38,500 a month. Now, and then I picked up 77 down payments. So 77 times 10,000 is 77,000. And then I picked up 77 $2,000 extra. So that's another 140,000. So you see, I do about just under 100 houses a year. I've fallen under 100 in the last two years because the real estate market is so friggin' hot. I mean, people are getting multiple offers, but I don't go to the normal places to find houses. I deal in chaos. Wealth comes from chaos. Where is there chaos? Death disease, divorce, transfers. Winning the lottery is a form of chaos. It's a good form of chaos, but they give away their old crap when they win the lottery. I've bought a lot of houses from lottery winners. Really? Yeah, because they don't give a crap anymore. Ah, this 2,000 square foot house in the regular neighborhood is a piece of crap. Now I need this million dollar one. So I don't even care. What is, get off my hands today. How much will you give me? Um, there's good chaos and there's bad chaos. You know, people need $20,000 because they're going to go to jail for 10 years if they don't pay the child support in three days. You know, there's just stuff. I didn't make the chaos. I didn't create the chaos. I wish they didn't have the chaos, bless their souls, but they do. And right. someone's going to get their house and it might as well be me. Exactly. I mean, it's a really good point. So, I mean, it is a hot market. I mean, you know, the recession's over. Now we are, you know, when I say we, I'm talking about we're in the San Antonio, San Marcos, Austin area. It's just a hot market right now. Okay. So, you know, one, and I, I want to be cognizant of people that might be in hot areas, San Francisco, California, New York, they're hot areas, Florida. I would say the country is kind of hot right now, but I'm just talking like really red hot areas. Vegas is hot again. How can they use this system to make money in quote unquote hot areas? How can they do that? Well, I mean, my particular strategy, owner financing, works particularly well in houses that are traditionally sold for on the market for like 150 or less. Because I sell my houses with a high interest rate. I make a decent, I make a couple of points between what I borrow from my private lenders and what I sell. And that's part of the money-making formula. And if you have a whole lot of money racking up 10%, the deal doesn't work. Think about the core belief. Right. A person paying $1,000 a month to rent would rather pay $1,000 to own. At some point, the relationship between the rent and the house payment breaks down in expensive housing. If you keep going up the ladder to 150 160 170 180 at some point, the rent and the mortgage payment don't even resemble each other anymore. They're not interchangeable. And the perfect, the perfect house is a house that when you sell it with owner financing, the person inside your house owes you 100000 or less. That is the sweet spot, okay? So this does not work in California. It doesn't work in San Francisco. It doesn't work in Las Vegas, Nevada. It won't work in Austin because Austin's freaking California and Texas, right? Yeah. You guys are over there Californicating Texas. 
But most of the state, most of Georgia, Alabama, parts of Florida, Missouri, Kansas, Carolinas, all kinds of places have really affordable housing. In 2009, I told you I was buying a house a day. In February, I bought a house every day. I bought 28 houses that month in February, and it was a 28-day month. Out of those 28 houses, my cheapest house was 12000 and my most expensive house was 38. So here's the magical thing about owner financing. I don't have to fix the house to owner finance it to you for double what I bought it for. I can have a hole in the roof the size of a dining room table because I'm the one giving the loan. And if you like the house and you understand about the hole and I show you the hole and you go, oh, I'll buy that and the hole, I'll buy the house and the hole, how much? And I, I, we agree on a down payment and the monthly payments. We're off to the races. Here's the most beautiful plan on the planet, Heather. It is the most beautiful strategy ever invented in the real estate investing strata so far that I know of. It's buy it. Don't fix it. Owner finance it for double. Collect the down payment and be owed payments for years and years and years. And then watch the guy making payments on your house. Go over budget fixing up your collateral. <laughs> Wow, that actually really is good. That's actually really good. I know you have a course out there and a book up out there about that. I want to put that out so you can go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash a thousand, heatherhavenwood.com forward slash one zero 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 to check out his book, as well as the course. He has a course about owner financing, what we're talking about today. So go check that out. So this is really interesting. I never thought about that. You know, let's talk about virtual real estate investing. So let's say someone's listening and they're in the middle of Manhattan. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right? This is not going to work in Manhattan. Let's just be honest. Or San Francisco or where the heck I am in Austin, right? So can they do this virtually? Can they buy and sell houses in North and South Carolina or in San Antonio and they're not living there? I'm training five people right now to do just that. Two in the LA area, one in New Jersey area, one in Portland, Oregon, and uh, another one, I think, in Florida. But yeah, you can. So here's the thing. When I started getting my systems down, I have I have four buying agents. I have two salespeople. Everybody works upon, gets paid upon success. I don't really have any employees except for one person, my daughter, Shannon, who has been sitting in that chair for 20 years doing the paperwork and the closings for every deal that comes in and every deal that goes out. And that's my only employee. And uh, in fact, I gave her a percentage of the company a couple of years ago, tied her to the bottom line. But everyone else gets paid upon their success. So I've got people out there, four people looking for houses for me every day. I have two people that sell my houses every day. They get they get a percentage of the down payment. And everyone in this family, that, that six people, they all make really close to $100,000 a year or better. And they weren't making that when we met. And I don't like to hire people that want to be involved in real estate. That's the last people I want to hire because they all want to be me. I just want someone who wants a job. So I go find the best Hoover vacuum sales cleaner guy in the, the region and say, how much you make? And he says, 60. I said, how would you like to make 100? He said, great. I said, well, quit selling that and sell this. I actually give them personality tests. This is what they need to be. They need to be highly motivated, self-motivated. They need to be money motivated. They need not to be entrepreneurial. And they need to be very bad money managers. Now, what, what kind of test is that? Is that a, is that a Colby? What a test is that? I used to know. I don't know, but they give them a test all the time. I, I see them. I don't. I just did, that's, don't well, first remember. First of all, that's really interesting. Money motivated. So I immediately think money motivated is going to be entrepreneurial. But you're right. There are people that are money motivated, but that doesn't want to be an entrepreneur, and it is very different. But what did you say? Money motivated, not an entrepreneur. And what was the other one? Highly, highly motivated, highly responsible. I didn't say that. I look for responsibility. They have to be responsible. They have to be trustworthy. I don't want them to be entrepreneurial. And I don't particularly care that they know how to manage their money very well. Interesting. Do you, do you hire, have you thought, I mean, I'm just throwing this out here. Have you ever hired military before, military personnel? No, not, not because I have anything against it. They just haven't come across, yeah, they just haven't we, come across we, my path. We've hired a business manager and he's, he's exactly what you just said. You know, he's highly motivated. He's re fully responsible, tied to the business and the money aspect, but he's ex-military. So he's very responsible and, and consistent with everything. And we love that. So, in, you know, out of the military, got kind of, you know, after he got left the military, whatever you want to call it, they don't treat the military very well. So he's highly motivated. You know what I mean? So I really like that about him. Okay. So, so you're saying that you can teach somebody in Austin to buy and sell in Florida. Is that what you're saying in the virtual? You're teaching people how to do that? Absolutely. But if you're in Austin, I don't think I'd go to Florida. I think I'd just go to Dallas or Houston or Waco. You know, I know a guy that buys 100 houses a year in Waco. You wouldn't think, but, you know. Waco is a great town. It is a great town. It still is a great town. It is a great town. And I'm thinking about, I'm really been jumping back to your military guy 
I'm looking for someone probably to be the CEO of a company here soon. And that's what I'm looking for is like a, a guy that was higher up in the military that just doesn't take any crap. Yeah, you know, it's really, I mean, I love the vets. And every time that I meet somebody who's a vet, they, it's interesting, the gentleman that works for us, he's, you know, he's considered a millennial in the world of, of that phase. But he doesn't like the millennials because he went through seven years, six years of the military in the Marines. You can't be whiny to be in the Marines. You know what I mean? Like all that gets kicked out of them. I'm raised by Marines. And my brother was a Marine. My father was a Marines. The problem sometimes with the Marines is, is they don't come in and correct you. They just beat the hell out of you and just throw you out the door. <laughs> Wrong hey, Marine. you weren't supposed to do that. Bam. <laughs> I can see that happening. So what, what do you think is going to happen in 2017? Are you going to continue this business model? Where do you see it happening? Because what I'm seeing right now in the marketplace, it's shifting a little bit. We possibly going to have a Fed rise, hike, whatever, of the interest rates. And most likely it's coming, it's coming. So banks are going to start to clamper down a little bit. Yeah, so tell, yeah, I'm, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. So tell us why your model would still work if the feds increase rates and on and on. Well, because I don't need any banks. I, I borrow money from private people. Instead of paying them 8%, I'll have to pay them 9 or 10%. But everyone's going to have to pay more for money. And in fact, the rates should go up. And I want the rates to go up a little bit because we are a nation of the greatest generations going out the door right now, the last of them. The baby boomers are now at their prime, and that statistical number is like a basketball going down a garden hose. I mean, their numbers are so huge compared to the population. It's literally like, here they come. I mean, a basketball passing through a garden hose. Here come the baby boomers. And here's the problem. They've worked all their life. They're saving their money, and they can't live off of 1% CD rates. So they're forced to go gamble in the stock market, and they're just getting abused like hell in the stock market because... I personally feel like it's manipulated manipulated by the big boys, and that's not you, and that's not me, and we're not invited to the club. As long as the rates are the same for everybody, I'm still going to continue just buy and sell my houses. I'll pay a little more to my, to my people I borrow the money, and I'll charge a little more to the people I sell the houses to. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Have you wanted to stop swapping your time for money? Ever wanted to leverage your expertise by selling your knowledge to hundreds of people? I call that smart. And now you can easily and effortlessly, without a web guy, create memberships, online courses, coaching programs. Go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash thinkific. Start making money off what you know today. Go to heatherhavenwood.com forward slash thinkific. Be the boss of your life. You're listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. And I'm going to keep going. But when the bank shut down, that's my hour. That's my time. You know, so I do about, about the baby boomers, I mean, I just read the stat that baby boomers are the largest population. You know that. But that's lowering. The population is lowering because obviously they're dying off. Let's just be honest. Okay. They're, they're passing away. Okay. And what's happened is millennials are the next largest. It's pretty equal at this point. It's not that far after being equal. Millennials are the equal because baby boomers created those millennials, right? But the millennials don't have a lot of money, right? So you have baby boomers, the wealth is going out the door, right? And then you have the millennials who can't afford a house. Well, you know why they can't afford a house? Why? They don't want to work. I mean, okay, if you're a millennial, there's not, you can never say anything about a group all across the board. But there are definite tendencies, right? So I'm looking at the millennials and they scare the hell out of me because I don't, you know, Unless they can find a job somewhere where they're on a computer and don't have to talk to anybody, they don't know how to talk to people. They don't know how to handle conflict. They don't know how to have a disagreement face to face with a man or a woman for that matter. They're like they're like, You're an asshole. They text you they text you, You're an asshole and then they run away. <laughs> You're an asshole and then they like run away. Oh, so what do you think if someone's just listening and saying, You know what, I'm nervous to get investing, I'm scared. I want to do investing, but I'm unsure. I, maybe I've read a book. Maybe I've gone to a, a $3,000 seminar. God, this sound, guy sounds legit. I don't know. Will this work? You know, what would you say to them? Well, I already know it works. I've been doing it for 20 years. I've got people all the country that does it. I know it works. The question is, can you make it work? I don't need to ask if it works. I've done it 1,500 times in a row. It, it works in San Antonio. It works in Atlanta, Georgia, and all over Georgia. It works in Alabama. It works for my students in Missouri and Oklahoma and Nebraska and everywhere in the world. It's working. I mean, it works. If it doesn't work, it's not because the strategy's wrong. It's just you're not doing something right. Well, I w But I would be the first one to tell you if you're in a state that's not conducive because there's some that just have laws that are not conducive, like Pennsylvania. My God. 
In Pennsylvania, if you try to make a loan, they're, they're going to send you to prison, it seems like. They just want to criminalize you for like offering to give someone a loan so they can get a house because you're not a bank. You know, you got to go register as a bank, and then they'll let you do it. So I'd stay the hell out of Pennsylvania. There's other places that are difficult would for other suggest, reasons. Would you suggest this for someone who's never bought and sold a house before? Would you say, hey, I'm a newbie? Would you like, hey, I'm going to buy your book, Mitch, and go through your program? I can, you know, you can do this? Well, I mean, within my program, while I'm teaching people to find the owner, the perfect owner finance houses, we run into other things. In most newbies, what they really need to do is wholesale three or four or five houses and get fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars in the bank so they can get some confidence in themselves and not have a gun to their head yeah. to like make the next deal because that's when you start making bad deals. A lot of them need to get the money in the bank. We call it hush money to say, look, I understand about this owner finance strategy and we're going to get to it, but right now you need to make some hush money. They go, What's hush money? I say, your spouse is definitely not on board with you, right? So we need to make some money so they'll shut up. <laughs> call it hush money. So we're going to hurry up. We're going we're gonna to wholesale three or four houses, put twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in the bank. And then when they start going, nye, 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 you go, <laughs> I got 30000 right here. Do you find that there's a, a lot of women getting into the business now, or is it just still men? Are you kidding me? Every woman that watched Flip This Whatever it, it, while they're staying at home, with their, they're all flipping houses. Every one of them is a house flipper. We should talk about the ones that aren't. It would be easier to talk about them because everybody's flipping a house right now. Because they get involved in the decorating thing. They think that's really cool to take the crappy thing and then make it into the neat thing. And they all fancy themselves as supreme decorators. Oh, no, I'm not interested in that. No, I mean, what about this business, the owner financing business? Do you find any women in that business? Because that's more, to me, it's sexier. Oh, yeah. There's, it's about 40% women, 60% men probably. But I have a lot of couples, though. So I don't know how. There's a lot of couples. Now, with your coaching program that you have your course, tell us about your course. You can go to heatherhaven.com forward slash 1000. Tell us about your course. Well, the online version is about 20 hours of conversation about all the different subjects. Basically, what I did was it's an interview style. I, I wrote an outline from A to Z about what it takes to run this business and how all the different facets of it. It's a big jigsaw puzzle. I show you all the pieces and then I show you how they fit together. Really nice. And that's about 20 hours in one person who knows an awful lot about the subject interviews me and we both discuss and we just keep talking about a subject until there's nothing left to talk about and then we move to the next subject. That doesn't have any access, but there's enough. We don't hold anything back because right. there's two kind of theories. The one theory that's the most popular is pay me some money and I'm going to give you a little bit of the story. But if you want to pay me some more money, I'll give you some more story. And if you pay me a whole lot of money, I'm going to give you all the really top secret stuff. This is what I do. I'm going to dump it all on you. I'm going to give it all to you. And if you think you can navigate it by yourself, man, more power to you. But if you think I can probably save you from making some really critical mistakes, then you'll find me. But there's the online course. You can take it and launch a career from it. And then if you want a little bit of help, we meet every Tuesday for group coaching or Q&A at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Every 7 o'clock, I've been doing it for five years. All of the calls are archived. And not only do you get to be on the call every Tuesday, but you also get 200 hours of archived Q&A, where if you don't want to wait a week for another question and answer session, you can hear me helping people with real life problems for hours upon hours till you're blue in the face. That's like 3500 for the year and a $500 renewal. And my commitment on that call is to stay on that call until every single person's question is answered. I have never failed in that endeavor. And at one time, the call went for five and a half hours, but we were having a great time. I didn't want to get off. We were laughing, having fun. But typically, these calls last an hour and a half to two and a half hours. There's no particular order or topic. If you have a question or a comment or you want to share a victory or you want to you know, get some prayers over a loss, we're, we're, we're all in there for everything. And then if you think you just want to be able to pick up the phone and call me anytime you want to, I'm 15 grand. But here's the catch. I'm not a mill house. I can't take 100 people and give them my phone number, right? So I got to deal with about 10 people at a time. Because here's one of the really big differences between me and a whole bunch of people out there is that when you sign up to be mentored by me, I don't delegate you off to some student that did 15 deals last year. I mean, you're getting me 1,500 deals, 20 years worth of experience, all my contacts, my resources. You know, I'll show you my scars and why they happened and so that you don't have to get one. Exactly. And, and I, you know, I, you, as I told you before, you, I'm actually looking at being one of your clients so, <laughs> with the coaching program. So I'm actually in the conversation right now with my fiance about it. So yeah, I mean, it's a great program. And, you know, I've been around a long time with it, with the uh, information marketing real estate in industry itself. And I'm not trying to diss it, but there are a lot of people, you and I both know them 
that you know, they do 15 houses and all of a sudden they're a master, you know? Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. And here's the thing, because I do it the way I do it, if someone wants to come on with me at that higher level, the $15,000 level, I, it's just not an automatic yes. I need, I want to talk to you. I want to figure out where you're at. I want to figure out where you've been. I want to figure out who's on board. Or you gotta, you know, I want to figure out what the issues are. I'm trying to figure out what's your chances for success because i got, I got to see you make this money back. So in probably well over 150 students in my career that paid for that one-on-one, I, I was one return, one return. And he didn't ask me for it. I saw that it wasn't going to work out. I shouldn't have taken the guy. And I just said, here, this is not working out. Let's get you straightened out. You want to stay in for the calls, then I'll, I'll keep the 3500 bucks, and you can stay in on the calls if you want to. But I think you need to go back and do some flips or catch up a little bit because you're too far behind. Well, you could, guys, check it out. If you're interested, check out Mitch at heatherhavenwood.com forward slash a thousand. That's one zero zero zero. This is Mitch Steven. You can also check his book out directly at his website. It is thousandhouses.com as well. So, um, I mean, I might be, you know, look, I'm looking at the course myself and talking to him privately. So if you uh, join in and you hear me on one of the calls, say hi. But, you know, I honestly just want to say, I think, you know, you're doing amazing. I just love that you're a friend and I love that what you're doing in, in here in the South Texas area. And uh, just last words um, as we wrap it up. Well, I do want to say we've known each other for at least five years, I guess, because that first time when someone wanted to take me on a stage and let me express myself about what I was doing in this business, you were an event coordinator for that event in a very ritzy place in, in uh, San Antonio. You know, so you've you've seen me for five years now. You've, you've watched it all grow up. And uh, I, I had no idea that it would come this far that anyone would ever call Mitch Steven and say, I need your help. <laughs> I know some English teachers that would roll over in their graves right now if they figured out I had three books out. Right. No, you know, and honestly, uh, the point of that is that I've seen he is already successful on that day five years ago when we did an event and he's still successful to this day. It's just that he was just now launching his what we call information side. But I can honestly say he's been doing this day in, day out as an investor. It's what it's his mastery, you know, and that's what you want as a teacher. You want a master. Right. You don't want just a teacher. You want a master who can say, Hey, oh, I've been down that challenge. I've, I've hit that road. Let me tell you exactly what you need to do there. You know, cause you probably hit every single challenge. No, when people are talking to me about their conversations with their buyers or their sellers, you know, I just start chuckling. They go, what? I said, oh, I know where this is going. I know exactly what's going to happen. I know exactly what they're going to do. And I know what they're setting you up for. And they go, what? And I said, they're going to do this. They're going to do this. Now call them back and tell me if I'm not wrong. And they'll go, they'll call me back and go, son of a gun. <laughs> Son of a gun. They did exactly what you said they were trying to do. I said, I know. It happened to me. Well, because you've been down the road and that's what you wanted to master. So go check it out at heatherhavenwood.com forward slash one zero zero zero. Okay, guys, this is The Win with Heather Havenwood.